But what would your advice be in, in, in the UK and the NHS? Yeah, I mean, one, one of the challenges I see in a lot of organizations, they try to do too much at once, right? And yeah. Talking about that transition in architecture both before by sort of taking small chunks. Right. That's really a, a better strategy because what, what I find is if you try and do too much at once, it really never gets done. You try right. and make it too perfect and you never really achieve it. Well, it was a huge do. project and uh, I think the stakeholder management could have been better. <laughs> Dealing so with the, you know, the medical fraternity isn't easy, <laughs> but... I, I think um, mm. also the other advice I would give is that um, I'm very impressed with the UK government, um, what they've done with the cybersecurity strategy here mm -hmm. in the UK. And in fact, the, the government here in the UK has provided, I think, better advice and support than we've seen in the US from our own government. Oh, really? Right. Um, and in large part, that has been through the formation of um, NCSC. Mm -hmm. and That's fairly new, though. It's fairly new, yeah. Mm. but. A lot of the individuals responsible for forming that over the years have been building some of the foundational components that have gone into that. Yes, there have been elements of government who have looked after security and those have been pulled together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so today we have the UK Cyber Essentials, which mm -hmm. touch on, touches on a lot of these hygiene related issues. Mm -hmm. And then the UK Cyber Security Strategy is fantastic in that it's actually fixing some of the flaws that we have, not only with the internet, but with email, some of the connective technologies that really connect all the different organizations here in the UK and globally. Um, so I see a, a, you know, a lot of effort from the government, uh, especially through NCSC, trying to change a lot of these habits. And mm, so mm. I, I think engaging with them is a very great way to better understand uh, how to mature or how to expedite your information security program. It's, it's a very big um, animal to <laughs> It, tame, it I is, think. but I think they're on the right track with starting with the basics. and they right. They've been really preaching uh, about things like patching and configuration management and access management, which I really think is a great message that resonates, that will resonate well um, and help to, I think, offset some of the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that's introduced by a lot of the vendors speak, which talk more about zero-day threats and mm. things that are well beyond mm. A lot of the areas that you know, especially in healthcare, mm. that they're, they're mm. challenged with at the mm. moment. Right? Well, Forget yeah. about zero-day attacks. <laughs> we need to figure Hatching. out how we're going to patch our <laughs> systems, right? Yeah, um, some of that stuff was pretty old. Yeah, I mean, um, WannaCry mm. is a great example of hygiene mm. if you look at it, mm. right? So, mm. WannaCry could have been prevented four different ways, mm. right? So you could have patched four different ways. Four different ways. You could have patched your systems within the 60 days that were available before WannaCry was released, and that would have prevented it. You could have uh, prevented communications between SMB, which is the Windows protocol, SMB v1, which is the Windows mm -hmm. protocol that allows for sharing uh, yep. data across systems. Yep. Most times, you don't need a system to talk to another system to do that, and um, especially over the internet, which was mm -hmm. the case here. So you could have blocked that, which is already mm -hmm. a best practice. Um, you could have also have upgraded to a newer version of SMB. SMB v1 is almost 30 years old. Mm -hmm. It's an old protocol. It's, it's quite interesting. Uh, you, you're talking, uh, I think, in, on the website and in some of the blogs about the UK um, probably being your next market of interest. Um, is there any reason for that? Is, is, it, uh, is there something in particular that you see in the UK market? Uh, mm. First off, the size and complexity of organizations in the UK, I think, is on a similar scale to many of those in the US. Mm -hmm. um, the market here is, is pretty significant, right? And some of the biggest organizations in the world are headquartered here. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that's, that's one reason. The second is, I view the UK as having a very progressive view on cybersecurity. Oh, okay. uh, with a lot of the actions the UK government mm -hmm. has taken, uh, I consider the UK now to be a leader in cybersecurity in the world. It's today. quite interesting, the public sector, everybody decries it, but actually in IT, it's done some good things. Uh, setting in standards for project management, program management, uh, ITIL on service management, um, and BA and TOGAF on the architectural side. So, Absolutely. you know, it, it has set some standards in there. And now, I think, in, in security as well. I think you're, I think you're right there. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at other regions of the world, like Asia, there's a big gap to mm. where between where the UK is and, and where Asia is. And, mm. and there's a lot of research to support that. Yes, yeah. 